Mark Watson at FTS.com. I'm here at 11 Athletics in Columbus, Ohio uh, with my man Alex Coleman. We're going to go ahead and go through one quick uh, jump training drill that you can do that incorporates some resistant jumps with some biometrics, some tuck jumps with using the uh, Versa hurdles uh, with the sprint at the end. Um, so one thing we're going to do is, again, if you're in a situation where you have athletes that are a little more advanced that uh, are in a situation where they can do proper mechanics, they can utilize proper mechanics with jumps, um, and you can use some resistance with it, absolutely. You've got some athletes that won't be able to do that, and that's up to your discretion. So the one thing we'll do is we'll just take a mini band, and we just put that on like a backpack, and we can use that as, as our resistance. So what this drill is going to look like is we're going to go through three resistant vertical jumps, right? So it's going to be a jump land, jump land. It's going to be a, a, a slow response uh, type. So again, it's not going to be plyometrics. It's not plyometrics. As soon as the athlete's done, we're going to go ahead and do three, execute three tuck jumps uh, over three hurdles, and then go ahead on the last one, they're going to go ahead and land in a sprint. What we're looking for is um, a, a, a good landing mechanics, a, a, as high as possible jumps on the resistant, and we're looking at limited ground contact time when we're going through the, the, the tuck jumps on the hurdles. And lastly, we want to transition from land to a sprint as quickly as possible. And again, there's some compensations the athlete can do. Uh, but again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some, some coaching points at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll go through this drill. Gonna, when I grab the resistance band, um, this is just a mini band. You can use whatever band. Usually for most athletes, a mini band or a micro mini will work. Um, I'm going to grab it by hand. If you have young athletes, have them grab it by hand. Sometimes they can actually use their foot, but just be careful that, again, they have that secured. So again, uh, the other thing is making sure that the athlete, you keep coaching that they're going to jump straight up. They're going to want to venture forward a little bit with their landing. So again, make sure, again, you're emphasizing they're going to jump and reach. So we'll go ahead and execute 3-3 and then a sprint. Alright, so those are, again, what we're looking at, you see the athlete has a tendency to kind of venture forward a little bit when they're jump, uh, when they're jumping with a resistance band. And so again, you've got to make sure that the athletes, again, when they land, a lot of times that can help them. You know, with the band, sometimes you'll get an added stability component, uh, which is sometimes not the best thing. So again, you got to make sure that the athletes advance enough that again, when they land, they're coming right back up and trying to land back in that same position. And they're going to kind of fight that forward. A um, couple of things to look at when the athlete lands, um, so from a coaching standpoint, if you have an athlete using a resistance band, we're looking to make sure when the athlete lands or landing on the balls of their feet, um, and they're really, those hips are sitting back. So if I'm looking from the side, I want basically my shoulders, chest behind the knees, knees behind the toes when I land, staying on the balls of my foot, coming straight up, making sure again I'm getting full sense with the hips, knees, and ankles. When they go through with the tuck jump, this is like a tuck jump assessment, uh, even for ACL injury. Uh, the best way to coach this when you're looking for the tuck jump is to be at the front so the athlete's coming right to you. So what you're going to look for is if the athlete's coming up, if their knees are uneven when they come up, if one foot lands in front of the other or before the other, um, if you have any kind of valgus on, on takeoff uh, when they jump. Um, and again, if any, any kind of unilateral discrepancy with how they jump and how they land is maybe something you have to address. And then at the end, when they go ahead and sprint, a lot of times on that last landing, they're going to want to split and already be in that staggered stance when they land. Try to get them to land parallel, and then if anything, they can go ahead and take a drop step before they sprint. But again, that's a way to add a resistant jump component with a plyometric exercise and then finish off with a sprint. So again, at all times, looking at the athlete from the side, you know, there's those same checkpoints. Again, if they're going over the hurdles and they're not bouncing off the ground, um, it could be a couple things. It could mean fatigue, fatigue from the previous set, the previous rep, the previous week, uh, the previous workout. Uh, it could be the, the athlete is just in CNS fatigue or, or muscle fatigue from, uh, from a previous workout. Or it could mean the hurdles are too high, or just the athletes are just not ready uh, from a developmental standpoint to do those exercises. So make sure, again, you're watching and coaching athletes as they go through that. Um, we use these Versa hurdles, uh, like these hurdles, because, again, they're very light. 
um, if, if the athlete hits their foot, these front parts come off, they can adjust from 12 to 42 inches, and again, they'll tip forward or the front panel will come off, and then they're very light, so again, storing-wise, it's pretty easy, um, as opposed to some other track hurdles uh, that, that you may have. So uh, again, um, any of your needs, make sure you visit EliteFTS.com.